Hi, my name is Yemi, Yemi Olishon. I'm the founder of The Change Hive. Um, I think we've seen a number of AI chatbots and um, data analytics being used in a way that's very fantastic. I think one that comes to mind for us in the UK here is Monzo, Yerin Monzo last year. It had, um, so for guys that use Monzo, at the end of the year, kind of similar to how um, Spotify had your year wrapped in Spotify, they had a theme for your year with Monzo. They kind of showed you where your biggest spending habits was. And it did two things, right? I think for me personally, it helped as a consumer, you reflect on your year and see where you've been spending lots of your money. For me, it was travel. <laughs> and I know quite a few people that was Boots and it was Greg's, but seeing that trend um, was quite insightful, one. And then from Monzo's perspective, it was actually quite a good viral content for them because you had lots of people and it was quite trendy and people talking about how their Monzo um, year had been. So that actually, although quite gamified, was a great way to use personalization and digitization um, tools because you could take all that data of all the customer spending habits and tell them which restaurants they were spending most of their money on. Um, I think there was, they, they, they also said that the, the restaurants I spend the money on as well. And you can also personalize the offers that you give to each customer depending on their spending habits as well. And I think Monzo for me in the UK is really um, leading that um, in a way that is visible and accessible to the customer. Two main things come to mind. The first one is primary ethical challenges, right? So making sure that in our desire to embrace technology, we're doing it in a way that's ethical um, and we're not um, misusing people's data. So if, we, if the purpose for which the data was collected is what it's being used for, even if by using it for something slightly different, it might make technology more um, beneficial. So we have to stay ethical when we use of the data. And then secondly, is the accuracy of the data as well, right? So because uh, the worst thing is to try and improve experience with wrong data and it just creates the wrong, the wrong, um, the wrong uh, benefit, right? Because you now have customers complaining that they've been offered stuff that doesn't align with them or, or um, they've been uh, pigeonholed or bias is introduced into, into the data. So it's two things, making sure data is collected in, a, in an ethical way and used ethically, but then also the, the data that's being used is also um, curate and bias free. I think what excites me is the integration of sustainability into banking in general. So um, people can now potentially we're already seeing that with investment, maybe not so much with day-to-day -day savings, I say, but with investment portfolios, you have like already investment advisors being able to put together um, funds that take into account people's preferences for um, for their ethics and for um, any kind of sustainability goals that they want to, to see prosper. So the ability for the customer to weave in their ESG, personal ESG goals with their money um, is something that excites me. So I think I take it back to when chatbots were first introduced. When we were first introduced, they were actually a pain. And it was like the bank was just trying to get rid of you by giving you a chatbot to go talk to. It's like, listen, I don't want to deal with you right now. Talk to this chatbot and go away. But it's changing significantly. Right now, it's sometimes easier and quicker to talk to a chatbot than it is to talk to a real human being because you can have like a natural language like conversations. I think the pioneer in this space right now is Bank of America's Erica. AI chatbot is fantastic. Um, so you can have like, it actually can take, can look through all of your records, analyze it, crunch it really, really quickly, quicker than any human being can possibly do and give you advice that is specific to your own situation. That's not something that we could have done without technology. Um, so that is something that really excites me, right? Is the fact that technology is coming in to help the customer understand first of all their spending habits that we talked about with months so you can look at historic information and you can also take those that historic information and very very in seconds crunch that data and tell you what it what it recommends for you so you can have a lot more tailored recommendation so personalization is no longer being able to say hi um miss whatnot and say your name it's now more really understanding you intimately and um, beyond just what the human eyes can see right 
And then secondly, I think another bank that's done personalization quite well is um, HSBC, the voice recognition. I really love that when you call, when I call my HSBC bank, I'm not having to say, oh, what's your date of birth? What's your, with your voice? They've, they know who you are and it, self, it authenticates you and takes you through all that self-verification process. So I think those are some examples of how we see personalization and really helping the customer. I'm hoping to see more um, ESG things, as we mentioned, right? So, because there's a big push, I think especially with Gen Zs um, coming up, there's a they, they have a lot more of a of a desire to do things that are ethically appropriate for the environment. Um, so, I'm hoping I'm expecting to see banks really incorporate that more into their offerings. So, London, London Stock Exchange has decided to list crypto, so it's now becoming a lot more mainstream. It's no longer the thing that was just for nerds in their bedroom. Um, or, game, for, or for gamers, right? Um, so with that becoming more mainstream and being listed by the stock exchange, I expect to see, of course, more banks incorporated into offerings and um, not just Bitcoin as the currency, but it'll be interesting to see how they also adopt blockchain, the technology, um, as a way to perhaps reduce costs to the customer by eliminating the need for brokers, right? Because with the blockchain, everything is all there and all verified or verifiable and not possible to be deleted so potentially the need for brokers are reduced significantly and so the uh, the the intermediary fees that is passed on to the customers might go away and so you may start to find that things are a lot more accessible um to the customers as a result of adoption of blockchain um but yeah so those are the two things i'm expecting to see more of esg and perhaps more blockchain and, and crypto